epilogue. A large gathering is about outside the dwarf fortress in the snow a year later. Many people have come to witness the killing of Darkin. Of the group, only Lancaster shows up to this public event. The wind bites their face with snow as the dwarves escort Darkin, who is a mess in rags, to the masses. The people shouting curses at him, and Darkin smiling at them evilly. Dwarf execution is especially horrid. They bludgeon someone to death. The new king is outside standing with the crowd and will do the honors with the ceremonial dwarven mace. Lancaster is the one overseeing the execution. They have history dating back all the way to King Iscadia's time. Darkin, however, misused, misused his knowledge and power in an outward manifestation of harm and malice. Lancaster does not hold him accountable for his inward thirst for power, as he is as he too shares this. Lancaster despises his outward wheel of hatred. Everyone is called for a moment of silence. The birds fly by, and the snow is all that is heard, blowing hard in the wind. The group of dwarves are ready to begin, but Lancaster stops them to tell Darkin something. The dwarves allow it, saying, Be brief, sir, this must end here and now. Lancaster gets down on one knee to Darkin's level and tells him, once you were wiser than me, but never have you been my friend. I curse your very past because you are too foolish to cherish your own future and the future of anyone else. The lives of others mean nothing to you. You are scum. Darkin spits on Lancaster and the dwarves bash away at Darkin's face, brutally beating him. The scene makes some people hide their faces. There are of course no children here today. The mace has turned his, faces, his face into a new shape, and as he makes sound, sounds of absolute agony and pain, Lancaster sighs and the group walks away toward the dwarf's stronghold as the dwarves continue to beat Darkin's face savagely. They then turn to the other parts of the body. It took two hours of this for Darkin, even in his weakened state, to finally give in. The great hidden threat to the world was dead and gone. And with him, a bright new age had come upon all who seek to forge a new destiny in this new era. The Battle of Imolol was a savage one, but with its victory, the tables had been turned on this old network of falsely venerated enemies. The enslavers are no more. Necromancy is sure to be outlawed, even in Murich. The land is safe, and it seems like it will get better for every man, woman, and child. Meanwhile, in the Twin Cities, the Silent Ones are all waking up for the first time since their enslavement, enslavement by Fomal. If they had all died in the ritual, the world would, would have been destroyed, but alas, the war was won. All of the people had memory loss, and all had to be explained to them. Norman had administered a remedy used by the dwarves when Obsidian corrupted them. Obsidian got away from the battle somehow. Either that or he never showed up to face it. His power to see the future is, a, is his only real power at all, and it seemed to have saved him. The cloaks are off, and now the world watches with open eyes. People who brave the internment of life and come out victorious are the true victors. The, the East were mainly neutral throughout, through, throughout all of this, and they were lucky. Foolish or daring, it is hard to say, hard to tell. Escadia went through many changes as, as many came to trial for their aid with the enslavers and necromancers. Some were executed, others jailed, still others shared even worse fates. Things were back to normal for a time, but the memory of Fomok's threat still remains all all that the realms of darkness still still reminds us all the realms of darkness always seek to destroy that which is in direct opposition to it. Norman, Dannon, and Lancaster have a venerable friendship that lasts through th that lasts through the years, and the orcs have become more civilized. The dwarves become a lot less so, and have threatened the sanctity of the north. 
Hatred banished, foes opposed, and wars won. The pages turn on history of Iscadia. And this marks the end of the first stage of the War of Imola. May the souls of that day rest in peace. May the hope of a better tomorrow shine like a beacon to the unknown. The first stage is written, and tomorrow has yet to come.